Hi hey everybody, uh, video is starting in a second, but first I want to give you an update on what's been going on with me. Uh, I know I kind of dropped off the map, I haven't put a video out for quite some time. Um, basically what happened is we moved to Grass Valley uh, back in April and uh, I just kind of had to do a lot of work just to pay the bills and uh, you know pay for the cost of moving and everything. Um, so I've been doing some landscaping work with my company Earthcare Design, uh, found a couple of good clients and you know doing a lot of uh, firewood cutting and uh, brush clearance and um, we had those big fires um, the campfire just happened up in paradise which is about an hour from where we live um, so living in the foothills fire safety is real important so i've been doing a lot of that um, you know not really interesting for videos just cutting a lot of trees down but um uh, and doing some other stuff some orchard care but basically, I don't have a place to upload videos right now. Uh, we don't have internet access up on the mountain, and uh, Wi-Fi doesn't usually work, public Wi-Fi, to upload videos. So I'm working on finding those, uh, find solutions to those problems, and hopefully I can get some more videos out over the winter. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support for all my patrons. Um, and I hope you like the video coming up. I'm excited to show you what's happened with my last big project at the Backyard Ecological Landscape. So enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm um, back here in Southern California at the Backyard Ecological Landscape and I want to give you all an update on how it's doing and uh, what better time to do that than while it's functioning in the rain. So we're getting a good amount of rain right now. As you can see, uh, this gutter is capturing about half of the roof of this house. And that's all coming down and that's where it enters the yard, right here in this corner. Um, as you can see, there's a couple basins. Uh, one is around this fountain here. Uh, so pretty much that whole mulch area is now full of water. Uh, that basin extends under the gravel, goes in front of the patio here, and then over here as well, around these garden beds. That's a basin as well. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's full. So we've had pretty good rain this whole morning. Uh, this basin over here, which fills up off of this house, uh, it's pretty much full now as well. And that is overflowing into this basin here. So I've noticed, dug that around a little bit in here. And this one, I've never really seen this one filling. So I don't think there's enough water coming off of this roof usually to overflow this basin and fill this whole one. But this is capturing water, so at least I know that all the water that's falling on there is being captured because there is a gutter on the other side here, off that little shed, you can see it peeking out in the corner. So like I said, it's full up. Uh, this is kind of an extension of that. It's really just one big main basin back here. Um, all the gravel and mulch and edging and everything um, kind of sits on top of the grating I did back here. Uh, to control the water flow and so most of the time you don't even know that this is here um, Obviously that gravel pathway is not flooded. This usually is not flooded unless it's raining um, And you just can't really even see it, but it's functioning Underneath all of that so it's kind of the idea of the ecological landscape. It looks like a pretty normal landscape back here, but um, In those important times like now when it's raining uh, it functions. It functions to capture almost all of that water. We've had enough now to where it's overflowing. But this is a pretty significant amount of water that isn't going to go down the storm drain now. And it's going to stay back here to water these plants and water this big tree. This is a Melaleuca and these other trees back here. Um, to keep that water in the ecosystem so it's not just escaping going out to the ocean like you usually would here in Southern California. Um, so over here, uh, I'm trying not to walk through this and get wet, but over here you can see where that green pot is. Um, that's the spillway for this whole design here. So it's kind of why the water is backing up a little bit onto the porch here. There wasn't much I could do about that because this is the only place where water can leave the backyard. This is the, the low point of uh, this plane where the back of the house is and it was already concreted, so I couldn't lower that. Um, so I just worked with that. That was kind of the, what decided what everything else, the levels of everything else. So this water is overflowing here, over in that back corner, 
it's overflowing and going down that little uh, hallway there. Um, so it's good to be out here in times like this when it's raining with any design um, when you're harvesting water especially because you get to see how it functions in this overflow event. And so I can see now, you come over here and that water is barely even moving. Um, right there you can see a little bit of it dripping off there. And that's, that's perfect. It's controlled, it's not rushing. Uh, I know the water back here is moving uh, faster than a slow crawl. So it doesn't have any chance to cause erosion or uh, pick up soil and pull that out of the backyard. It's actually helping to build soil by breaking down this mulch. Um, not a lot of elevation change back here, so it's a little bit different from other designs where we had a lot of elevation. But, you know, other than the water harvesting uh, aspect, that's, that's working really well. And uh, all the plants that we put in are doing pretty well as, as well. So, um, this is filled in nicely. We've got some different kinds of lavenders, and we planted some of these succulents in here. Um, and these dusty millers, and it's filling in really nice. It looks, looks really great. Um, kind of the look I was going for. Everything is a bit small when I planted it, but now it's established and it's filling in the spaces. It's looking really good. The garden's been doing good. She's had a nice summer of growing vegetables kind of going into winter mode now. I'm just working on changing the irrigation. Um, I had put in, uh, this is just like quarter inch choker hose. And that was a cheaper option I put in, but what I found out is that um, it didn't really water these things evenly. It was watering these beds more than these beds because that's where the uh, irrigation pipe, pipe comes out first. And um, it was kind of always dripping. Um, I learned that these irrigation automatic valves over here, they need a little back pressure in order to turn the valve completely off. And so with that soaker hose, which is basically one big hole, um, they wasn't getting that back pressure. So it was always constantly leaking. So we're replacing that with quarter inch uh, drip emitter. I'm just gonna do a grid pattern across these beds here. And uh, still functioning to water the, the beds, but just to uh, won't have that leak by problem. But they're doing pretty good. They're a little bashed by the rain now. Um, this rosemary is doing great. The oregano is the one that came out. The other stuff, I planted a couple other plants in here, but I think the rosemary blocked them out with light. This one had enough room on the corner here to hang over the side. I think it looks really good. There was an artichoke in here. Uh, she got a harvest off of it, and then it died. I don't think it liked the transplant. It was an established one over kind of about where that fire pit is, but we transplanted it when we did the design here. Lived through the summer, but uh, didn't didn't continue on, so she's planting some other things in there and probably change it up eventually, too. Uh, back here is doing fine. Um, not much to show, just a little fire pit area. And uh, we refreshed the DG mulch along the back sides here. As you can see the mulch is working really good to suppress weeds. Uh, we did do some cardboard under this mulch um, as a weed block initially. Um, let me dig in there and see if that's even still around. So one thing you can see is it's still actually dry even with all the rain under here. Um, so this mulch on top is soaking up a lot of that rain and then we have actually a little bit of water under there. That's good to see. So, the cardboard is, uh, might be a little piece here. Yeah, there's a little bit of it left in there. So it's not completely broken down yet, but eventually that will break down um, into soil. So, it's nice in that cardboard, it functions like uh, weed block fabric. That keeps the weeds from coming through on that first year um, when they were going to be the strongest and then it degrades into soil so these basins not only catch water but they're building soil which is really what's going to help the health of these trees and these plants is having a good layer of spongy 
nutrient rich, uh, good soil that has a good water holding capacity that the roots can reach out to and, and be fed. So yeah, we've got this space in here. We planted um, some silver star and some woolly thyme, as well as something else called baby's tears. All that died, but the woolly thyme and the silver star are doing pretty good. Um, different spots. I've noticed one thing. We've got the silver star back here in the corner. There's not enough light back here, not as much light, so you can see how leggy that is. But we come over here to where there's full sun most of the time. Really small leaves, really tightly compact, so it just shows the different forms that plants can take uh, depending on the amount of light that they have. So you can see over here, mostly what survives over here is that silver star. There's some woolly, woolly time over here. Um, mostly what I planted over here is the silver star because it's better in the sun. Then as we go back, there's some more woolly thyme showing up. And I kind of wanted to see what would grow where, so we might come back and fill this in with some more thyme in the back from the, the empty spots, but it's doing pretty good. Uh, we do have to come through and do some maintenance occasionally. We do have little weeds, like this is a wood sorrel, comes up through the edges. There is weed block fabric underneath this gravel. That's, you know, you want that to be permanent, you don't want that to break down. But there are seams, there are edges. As you heard in Jurassic Park, nature finds a way. And so, just every time we come out, pick a couple weeds. It's not a big, not a big deal. If you let it go for a while, you get a lot of weeds, and then it becomes a task. But uh, you know, any any landscape requires interaction. If you want it to remain functioning, remain looking a certain way. Um, Otherwise, it's going to return back to, um, you know, how nature wants it sometimes. It's just lots of weeds and lots of mix of species, which is beautiful in its own way, but a lot of times people want it to look look a certain way, so that takes some maintenance. But yeah, I'm really happy with how everything's going here. This, this filled in really nicely, too. Um, This fountain's working well still. You gotta fill it up with water, but um provides a nice sound and also a bird bath. Also these rocks down here are kind of a bee watering station, bug watering station. They got a safe place to land to get some water. Yeah, that's about it. I'm really happy with how this is uh maturing and uh it's looking really good after its first summer. It's about the we some pretty good heat this summer. Um, yeah, just doing a checkup and letting you guys know how it how it turned out and uh, how it's doing. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.